Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 77, A New Hope for the Holidays. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my caring and loving co-host, Michelle Whalen. Aw. 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 <laughs> well, thank you. How are you doing this week, sweetie? I'm doing okay. Good. Yeah, Good. It's Blur's Day, and uh, yeah. this day, the other day, the day after that day, uh, they all just kind yeah, of they, blur they, together they now. They tend to blur together these days. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully our regular appearance on Twitch and uh, our podcasting here helps to keep people sort of grounded and gives you a, uh, sure. a chance to step outside of your normal mundane quarantine lives and there listen to go. some fun stuff. There you go. So on Disney Detective, we'll be talking about a new animation school that will build upon Walt Disney's legacy. A short uh, Disney detective. Yeah, nobody's ranting about Disney much uh, no. this week. It's, it's Abigail quiet Disney's week. not going no, crazy. No, she's, she's kind of quiet. Mm, okay. <laughs> she's in quarantine. <laughs> no lawsuits this week? No, nothing. Uh, Disney, Again. Disney kinda, must be behaving for a I change. guess, I guess. Uh, Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy is a, a short one as well. We'll be talking about... Um, announcement that they'll be coming out with a new holiday special and you know hopefully well i don't want to say hopefully because it can't help but be better than the <laughs> original be 77 holiday special true true so that should be interesting something that, that george lucas won't want to burn every copy of yeah yeah then in our entertainment news uh brian blessed who uh, was hawkman on flash gordon um Apparently determined that the Fla uh, Flash Gordon is the Queen's favorite film, which kind of surprises me, but <laughs> that should be interesting. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we'll be talking about uh, Quentin Tarantino uh, reportedly doing a new Star Wars, a uh, Star Trek film mm -hmm. uh, based on a particular Star classic Star Trek episode. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite, although I'm not a big Quentin Tarantino fan, so it right. should be interesting to see how that turns out. Right, right. Then we have an update on New York Comic Con 2020, another virtual Comic Con. Yep. So we'll see how well that Spoilers. works out. <laughs> 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 then we will move on to our insightful picks of the week, which we have a couple of uh, good picks there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. I think we got a good show today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, ready to get started? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's go. Go for Disney Detective. So Walt Disney uh, was once quoted as saying, crowded classrooms and half-day sessions are a tragic waste of our greatest national resource, the mind of our children. So Walt was always, um, you know, committed to supporting the next generation of artists and creative minds and something just crashed somewhere. Okay. Anyway, um, so during the week... Um, so so now the Walt Disney Family Museum is continuing that legacy. So during the week, the museum had actually hosted its first ever online fundraiser, which was an evening with Alan Menken. Uh, the fundraiser began with a ticketed VIP chat uh, about Alan's inspiring career and continued with a free performance that featured a medley of Menken's most famous Disney songs. So highlights included Under the Sea, 
poor unfortunate souls, be our guest, I see the light, um, a whole new world. Um, and what was kind of cool was during the performance, Alan Menken was joined by a special guest, Hamilton creator and composer, Menken's friend, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda. So you had the two of them um, on screen for a while. Uh, and they were actually talking also um, because they just worked together to uh, work on the score for the live action Little Mermaid film. Um, and they, you know, s shared some stories about, you know, different Disney films and, and whatnot. Um, so then, of course, they spoke about who the real star of the show was. Um, and it's uh, the At Promise Youth Animation Academy is what they're calling it. So according to the official information from the Walt Disney Family Museum, uh, this is going to be a Bay Area high school facility, and it's designed to build upon Walt Disney's legacy of bringing out that future generation of creative talent. Um, so some of the key points that, um, that they've been talking about is that the Academy... Uh, will be modeled as a four-year high school concentrating on recruitment um, from uh, undeserving communities. Um, the curricula will center on animation, full-length animation, um, and a film as part of your graduate program, uh, graduate project. Uh, students will receive state-of-the-art animation training, um, and lessons will be around the 12 principles of animation. And the goal is to become a national model for programs in animation and film industries. And this sounded really, really interesting. You know, kind of surprising that they haven't done anything like this in the past. Um, and since, you know, animation has you know, hasn't really slowed down. If anything, you're seeing more of it, um, you know, than before. So kind of cool that they're, you know, now starting a, a school to, to have this as their curriculum. So do they do anything along the lines of what they're proposing here with the Disney University? Well, Disney University is, is different. Disney University is, is what, the cast members go through when they're they're hired. Oh, so okay. Disney University isn't really a, a school. So this isn't affiliated with mm -mm. that endeavor or anything. This is a complete stand. Now, mm -hmm. are they partnering with any, with any universities? They or haven't. Anything? They haven't mentioned anything because again, this is high school equivalent. Right. So this is, um, you know, I guess going to be like a four year program. You know, because nowadays. High school has gotten so specialized, um, you know, whereas before you went to high school, unless you went to Votech because you weren't, you know, smart enough in some cases to 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 go to high school. You know, it was like, all right, well, you're not going to be college bound, so we're going to teach you how to do something else where over the years you know, going to, to Votech actually was better because you got a better career uh, right out of the gate. And now you have so many schools that you have these fine and performing arts schools, um, you know, where kids aren't just going to, to high school. It's almost like a, a pre-college in a way because they're, they're starting to study things that they really want to learn and do, you know, later on in life. So, this is kind of a, an interesting way, you know, so somebody that might be looking to go to, to an art school, well, here you're going to, you know, go to, go to this and kind of get your foot in the door, so you know, now, for is animation. This, is this something that, that Disney themselves are going to be running or is this a curriculum they've developed that they'll No, it sounded like it was going to be, school. at least to start, it was going to be their own you know, they're basically, you know, funding it from from the start. So, but you have to be in the Bay Area to attend one of those. Right, these. as of right now. But they're hoping if it works out that, you know, maybe they can offer and it in other areas. And that's sort of what areas. I'm suggesting is, yeah. you know, instead of them providing the facility, right. they develop the curriculum, license that curriculum out, and then they other could. high schools yeah. can you pick You never know. Up. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know what? The world always needs more animators, right? Yep, sure does. That was all we had for Disney Detective this week. That was Detective it for this week. For this week. 
Uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. So on Thursday, Disney Plus had announced that a new Star Wars-themed holiday special will hit the streaming service on November 17th. The The upcoming animated program dubbed the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special is set to arrive just in time for Wookiee Life Day. (laughs) <laughs> which obviously was originated from the original holiday special in 1978, which is so beloved by everybody, right? <laughs> hey, it introduced okay. Boba Fett. Well, true. It introduced Boba Fett. We'll give you that. So uh, the new animated special is set after the events of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. So according to The Hollywood Reporter... Ray uh, prepares to leave her family to get ready for uh, the Kashyyyk holiday, but thanks to a mishap at the mysterious Jedi Temple, Ray will find herself thrown through time, meeting characters from elsewhere or else when in the Sci- Skywalker saga, including Yoda, Darth Vader, and Obi Wan Kenobi. Kind of cool. She's gonna. You know, interesting. Kind of get in like a TARDIS, I guess. You know, let's mix everything. Uh, so, uh, other iconic heroes and villains from all nine Skywalker films are uh, will be featured as well in Lego form, of course. Um, fans are hopeful that this Star Wars holiday special will be much better than its predecessor, which, if you never saw it, included original songs um one that was sung by carrie fisher herself and you had harvey corman um an animated uh segment called the faithful wookiee as you mentioned that's where we got to meet boba fett for the first time and some other rather interesting things that people just don't want to really talk (laughs) And obviously, once news came out, Twitter was ablaze. Um, you know, some people were like, can't be much worse than the original, I hope. Um, you know, uh, you know, most people were like, I'm okay with this. Uh, some people said, you know, a lot of the Lego movies and little spinoffs that have come out have been pretty funny. Um, so hopefully they do it justice. You know, one person uh, said that they actually were hoping that there'd be some little homage, you know, to the kitschiness of the the other version. You know, maybe a little, couple of little jokes thrown in. Um You know, one person said that they'd only be happy if they did a scene for scene remake of the original, Um, you know, and then other people, you know, were saying, no, I'm I'm really excited to, to see this. Oh, and then, of course, there was one fan that said they wanted Disney Plus to actually put the original version on, you know, the streaming service for those that that didn't have it. Uh, so it'll be out uh, November 17th, uh, again, on Disney+. Plus. Um, I know whenever we've seen any of the the Star Wars, you know, Lego uh, shorts, they've been funny. I think our favorite one, or at least my favorite one, is um, uh, the one... Which one 
which episode was it? Was it episode one? No, episode, yeah, episode one, where red flags, got oh, your red flags yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it was just, we're doomed, no, red flag, and, it, you know, just something kitschy and, and stuff like that. So I, I think that'll be something cute to, to look forward to for the, the holiday season. Well, and I think it's kind of one of those things where, given the quality of the original mm -hmm. holiday and the fact that Lucas does not want it shown ever again. Right, right. Uh, and the fact that you can really only get it uh, off eBay and right, and which is where I like got that. your copy. Uh, Star Wars kind of needs to have right a holiday special. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone else has a holiday special. Right. Um, I'm kind of puzzled why they went the the Lego Star Wars route with it, though. Mm -hmm. Seems like that's whenever they want to do something that's silly and fun and and not not canon, I guess. They always seem to turn to the Lego world. Uh, and I would have thought they would have done more of the Forces of Destiny type thing with the new animated series mm -hmm. style that they I have. I could see them doing like that, that too, yeah. Um, it would have been really cool to see a live action version to see those stars, you know, that they introduced to us come back and, and fill some of these roles. Well, and, and the other thing too is when did they start filming it? Would, you know, obviously animation is something that is you know is being able to be filmed and done while people are in quarantine so the you know how far back did they start filming this well and if they wanted to keep it in the same um kitschiness right that the original was in those stars didn't sit in the same room to, oh to true film it either, yeah so. everybody was <clears throat> in there you you could have all done it like a zoom yeah you know like that would have been call. like the ultimate that would have been oh we can't get together for the holiday but right you know. right because you know we got a problem with the ship and da, right. da, da, da. but the other thing too is i wonder because don't forget the new uh lego game is supposed to be coming out that so i wonder true. if so this is more I'm of a sure tie-in tie -in for that so that's yeah. probably why they decided to to keep it with you know hey you just watched the holiday special and now get your parents to order the game for you right well and and you know at least now when start when when the holidays come around you you'll be able to watch something Star Wars. Right, you won't. That's you won't be kind of cringy or fast I, forward the right. song because this was kind of creepy. And I love the fact that they're still centering it around Wookiee Life Day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what was established in the original. Right, right. And the online game that I play, mm -hmm. uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, which we have a commercial for. <gasps> Is that the commercial we just had? Um, <laughs> <laughs> they do a Life Day special every right. year around the holidays, mm -hmm. and they, they sort of theme it to that. So keeping that mm -hmm. spirit alive, I right. think, is, you know, the spirit of Life Day is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was all we had for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Yep. All right. We'll be right back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Tell us about the Queen's favorite film. So Brian uh, Blessed has claimed that the Queen revealed to him that her favorite film is Flash Gordon, the 1980s sci-fi uh, film in which he starred as uh, Prince uh, Voltan. So speaking about the film's 40th anniversary, uh, 
On Yahoo Movies, the actor said that wherever he goes, people always demand that he recites his famous catchphrase. Everywhere I go, he says, all they want me to say is, Gordon's alive! He said, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, horses and queens and prime ministers, they all want me to say... Gordon's Alive. It's their favorite film. Uh, So then he continued. uh, He said that the Queen, uh, that it's her favorite film and that she watches it with her grandchildren every Christmas. Um, Then the actor, you know, during the interview uh, was pretending to, to talk like the Queen saying, you know, we watch Flash Gordon all the time, me and the grandchildren. And if you don't mind, I've got the grandchildren here. Would you mind saying Gordon's Alive? You know, (laughs) sure. When the queen asks you, you know, you go right ahead and do it. Right. So it was unclear uh, when the queen made uh, this reported disclosure. um, But it just so happened that he was appointed as a member of the order of the British, uh, the order of the British Empire for services to the arts and charities in 2016. So obviously not much is known about her, you know, taste in movies, but obviously, you know, it's come out that um, certain shows she likes, obviously Downton Abbey and, you know, The Crown. um, And she did appear uh, alongside Daniel Craig in uh, a little short, that they had played for the opening of the Olympics. So, you know, she has a little bit of a, a sense of humor too, but kind of funny to, to hear that this was one of her, her favorite movies. So, Hey, why not? Right. I think that that's kind of cool. The fact yeah. that, you know, she would even admit that mm-hmm. Flash Gordon was her favorite movie. She was a lot of courage. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, it's, you know, I, I remember, you know, as a kid, it was kind of one of my, favorite you know movies you know uh, uh, as a kid and not even realizing the history behind you know flash gordon yeah and then since you know watching which was one of your insightful picks um you know the the documentary you yep. know about him in the background of you know and i ended up watching it and it gave me a little bit more insight i was like yeah i remember well you know, and i and i will that. say having watched that i mm-hmm. would- I would kind of take some of what what <laughs> Brian Blessed is saying is as a grain of here. salt in, uh, in some respects. He, if, if there's one thing that I took away from that documentary, it's that he's a fantastic storyteller. Yes, yes, and uh, he he is very capable of stretching the truth to suit his <laughs> story. Sometimes, so true, true. Um, maybe he wants her. To like it, maybe she made an offhand remark. I don't know, uh, but I, w- I would know. take it with a grain of salt. Or, or maybe she says that to everybody she meets. Oh, such and such is my favorite film. It's, Whatever it was that and, you were, and in. I could certainly see as a matter of protocol she does that because right, she right. does. She has a tendency of flattering the people that that are in her right, company. Right, right. <laughs> so it's the diplomatic thing to do, of course. But, um, you know, it's one of our favorites, so I think that's good enough for us. There you go. So tell us about the new Quentin Tarantino Star Trek film. So Quentin Tarantino is actually pitching an idea for a new Star Trek movie. Um, So the report actually came from Deadline uh, that suggests that Tarantino will not direct the film, but that he's actually pitching the idea to J.J. Abrams. Um, And it's based on an episode of the classic Star Wars series that takes place largely Earthbound in the 1930s setting. Um, So... Again, not much has come about, you know, come out about this, but obviously, you know, for those that are Star Trek fans, realize that the original episode was called A Piece of the Action. Um, and what ends up happening is that the Enterprise uh, is going out in search of the USS Horizon that had gone missing. S- Uh, a century ago, and upon landing on the planet, the Enterprise crew discovers that in violation of the Prime Directive, the Horizon crew had uh, contaminated the civilization, and what had happened was a book was left behind that was entitled Chicago Mobs of the 20s, and that the uh, society that was there basically built their whole society around mobsters um so 
Uh, so uh, Quentin said that, you know, he would love if they would do this with, uh, you know, the newer crew, uh, the newer actors, Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, uh, and that cast, but they're not really sure if they're going to, you know, use those or go with a different set of, of actors at this point. Um, you know, so the idea kind of came, you know, and and Quentin was saying that if he directed it, it would be like Pulp Fiction in space. So he really didn't want to, you know, direct it. That's why he's pitching the idea. So I think that that might actually be kind of, you know, an interesting, you know, spin, you know, on, on things. So... See, and, and pitched like that, I, I agree, um, as long as he's not directing it. Right, because he, um, yeah. <laughs> his work is, tends to be very brutal, mm-hmm. you know, very yeah. graphic, very unnecessarily violent mm-hmm. most of the time. And I don't think his style would translate well to the Star Trek world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved a piece of the action, one of my favorite original series episodes Mm -hmm. i don't know how well that would translate into a movie today though right um and it might be worthwhile doing something similar because there's a number of time travel style Mm -hmm. episodes of of cultural contamination Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the whole nazi episode there's the mob one there's the gary seven episode with Mm -hmm. the apollo launches so there's a lot of very ripe content that you can draw on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the last Star Trek episode that we saw, or in fact, every episode, every movie that we've seen of mm-hmm. the Chris Pine series has borrowed something something from the past. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, the last episode they had borrowed elements from the Enterprise series. Then you had Khan. Uh, then you had Christopher Pike. So there's elements that they're drawing in to keep that continuity going. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing seeing them draw on one of these episodes like this would be, you know, probably equally as successful as everything they've done so mm-hmm. far. Yeah. Um, and I certainly wouldn't object to doing one of my favorite episodes. What would be nice and what would be, I think, interesting would be to take a Next Generation episode, mm. take the premise of a Next Generation episode and do that in – the Chris Pine mm-hmm. style of the original crew yeah, type thing. I could see that. And see how something like that would go. Because there's a, you know, seven years, mm-hmm. there's a ton of material to draw from mm-hmm. on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So it should be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see if... Uh, yeah, what comes out from it. If so. something comes out of that. Yeah. So we could, we could always use another J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Sure, movie. why not? So... So, on to New York Comic Con. What can we expect? Yeah, so New York Comic Con is usually one that's held uh, in the October time frame. So, obviously, you know, San Diego Comic Con, that got canceled. Uh, Emerald City, which was supposed to be earlier in the year. Um, So, obviously, they made their big announcement, um, you know, where they, you know, basically put out, you know, New York Comic Con is more than just a singular event that happens in New York in October. Uh, For many, it starts with the anticipation of the countdown days of the show, with the announcements, um, you know, who's going to spot, you know, Spider-Man and Wonder Woman on the, you know, their morning commute, Um, you know, and it basically goes on, you know, to say that, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, this year we, we have to you know, play it safe and we're going to, you know, go virtual. Um, You know, I thought what was was very sweet was that they mentioned, you know, the other comic cons, you know, um, as well. Um, And giving a shout out to um, Emerald City, to Keystone Comic Con, um, you know, so it it was, you know, kind of bittersweet. But again, you know, we knew it was going to happen. so, uh, so they're going to be going virtual. Um, it's going to be, where are the dates? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, 
I don't know where the dates are. It's October, uh, the middle of October. But what they were actually doing is this weekend, they there are a couple of things that uh, were popping up. Uh, so this afternoon at 12 o'clock, they were actually doing a Doctor Who panel Um and uh, but it was only going to be up for a little while. So I don't know if uh, if you still go to YouTube, uh, if it's if it's there, it was on if you go to uh, New York Comic Con's YouTube page, um, they were doing it live. I thought it was one of those, you know, oh, it's going to be taped kind of like how San Diego's uh, were. But no, it was actually live because I went like 10 minutes late. I was like, oh, OK. So I'm hoping, you know, if you go within the next couple of days, you can um, watch the whole thing because it was with Matt Smith. Um, you know, so that looked that looked kind of uh, interesting. So they had, like I said, this weekend, they have a couple of different online things going. But obviously, come October, that's when they'll uh, they'll be doing uh, more activity. So again, probably just like how San Diego was different events, different times, uh, probably different merchandise that you can, you know, order online. Um, but what was cute was in the end of their letter, they, you know, they say, stay, stay safe, stay nerdy. And remember, New York Comic Con fans wore masks before it was cool. That's true. So it is true. So kind of, you know, upsetting but we kind of knew yeah it was I, gonna I, I happen think, i think they did the smart thing here mm-hmm. they didn't drag it out they right. made the decision well ahead of time mm-hmm. um, and it's not going to go away right you know it's you're still going to have it mm-hmm. uh, you'll be able to enjoy it from the comfort of your own home you're going to mm-hmm. miss out on, on the experience right <clears throat> um but san diego had a lot of great panels that you can mm-hmm. watch yeah uh, a lot of them had very well done moderation. Mm-hmm. A lot of cool information came out of mm-hmm. it. Uh, and it's stuff that you might not have experienced exactly. because you would not have gotten into the hall to see it. And that's what we said before even, you know, watching any of the panels and then even after the fact saying how, you know, we even went to Star Wars Celebration and couldn't get into anything because... Yeah. It was so jam packed. So here was an opportunity where you didn't have to, you know, go the night before, sleep out, you know, on the street <laughs> to get your spot. Mm. You know, like you said, do it from the comfort of your own home. And if you couldn't watch it when it started, you had that availability to watch it the next day, a couple hours later, you know, a few days later, and still be able to to enjoy it. So and and you know the other plus is it's one of the most cost effective ways of mm-hmm. enjoying a comic book convention. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and that's why we even said after San Diego, if this is something that they want to continue and offer a virtual, you know, ticket to give you access to the panels, you know, even if it's an hour later, you know, with a special code to to enter. I'd be all, you know, for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, as much as I love going and looking mm-hmm. at the vendors and spending all that money, I don't have to spend all that money on collectibles <laughs> and get the information that I'm looking for. Exactly. So, so that it does Sa- work out. Saves us some money and, and space in the house. Yeah. It, there, <laughs> there are different ways that it works out in your favor. Absolutely. So... But that was all we had for our entertainment Mm -hmm. news. We'll take a quick break, come right back, and we'll talk about our insightful picks of the week. Mm -hmm. Go for your insightful pick. So this is actually my second time with uh, my insightful pick. Um, Gosh, it was probably over a year ago uh, that I first... uh, did the Umbrella Academy as my insightful pick. Um, And the reason why I'm bringing it up again is season two just dropped uh, earlier uh, last week, I believe, uh, on Netflix. Um, So the premise behind the Umbrella Academy is that on October 1st, 1989, 43 women around the world gave birth simultaneously, despite none of them showing any signs of pregnancy until labor began. 
Seven of the children are adopted by an eccentric billionaire, Sir Reginald Hardgraves, and turned into superhero team that he calls the Umbrella Academy. Uh, Hardgraves gives the children numbers rather than names, but they eventually are named by their nanny slash robot slash mother, Grace, as Luther, Diego, Allison, Klaus, Number five, who for some reason never got a name, uh, Ben and Vanya. While putting six of his children to work fighting crimes, Reginald keeps Vanya apart from her sibling activities as she supposedly demonstrates no powers of her own. So in the first season, um, the first season, if you haven't watched it, basically centered around the children being reunited after their father's death. So uh, all the kids kind of went off and did their own things and they were, uh, you know, estranged um, and kind of had their own lives and, and whatnot, but kind of came back because there was a looming threat to humanity. Um, and at the end of that season, um Something big happened that kind of forced them to time hop. So season two actually starts um, where everybody is in 1960s Dallas. But unfortunately, when everybody time hopped, they all time hopped in different years. So some 1960, 61, 62. So they kind of got scattered and it takes them kind of a while to, to find each other, but they're all in Dallas. It's just a matter of different time frame. Um, and basically they're scattered throughout. They started new lives, not knowing if anybody else was around and until obviously a new doomsday threat pulls them all back together. So, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, you know, it's, um, you know, superheroes. Um, it's, you know, kind of sci-fi-ish. Um, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories and, and, and whatnot and superhero things. The soundtrack is great. What, what's interesting is they use a lot of modern songs or older songs with a more modern spin on it. Uh, I think there's even a Spotify channel for all the the songs because just listening to the songs is is kind of cool you know it, it goes along very well with it and of course at the end of season two there was a whole big you know uh cliffhanger you know to to lead you up to to episode three so if you're into you know the the superhero thing but kind of the comic book version more so uh you know definitely give it a give it a look Cool. Good pick. Thank you. So after a slight break from documentaries with my picks last week, <laughs> we're back to documentaries. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, I, I know I threw everyone <laughs> off last week with that. Uh, so this week, my pick is a documentary on Amazon Prime called Starring Adam West. Whether you know him from his iconic role as Batman in the 1966 television series or from his bizarre portrayal as the mayor on Fox, Fox's Family Guy, Adam West is sure to have made an impression. But few people know the man behind the mask. Documentary filmmaker James Tooley spent three years following the legendary actor, meeting his legions of fans, and trying to understand what keeps the 85-year-old actor as passionate as ever. Starring Adam West is a fan-funded documentary about the creative and turbulent life of Adam West and the fan-supported quest to recognize the beloved actor with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This was interesting. Um, we've encountered Adam West several times at comic book shows that mm -hmm. we've come to. And the outward appearance has always been sort of a stuck up holier than thou, mm -hmm. you know, don't take a picture unless you're paying me for it. Right, type thing. right. And um, it, you don't get that feeling in this documentary. The documentary okay. literally follows the man, you know, to his house where you see him interacting with his family and his friends and his agent. Um, you see him at shows, you know, he goes to San Diego comic con in this documentary and you see how he, he reacts to fans and 
you know, he's greeting fans off the show floor, you know, getting mm-hmm. on an elevator. Extremely amicable. Mm-hmm. And the quest to get him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame was not one that he was even remotely interested in. Okay. It was one that his daughter and a local radio station in L.A., who he would frequently appear on their show, they wanted to get it for him. Mm. And, you know, they petitioned the board or whoever in Hollywood for it. And they, they're the ones that drove it through. And, and uh, it sort of follows him along while they're trying to get this star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And you get a very interesting background on Adam West. You know, you see how he was clearly typecast after Batman and, you know, his career kind of dwindled significantly after that to the point that he was basically doing sideshows. Mm-hmm. You know, he was he was being shot out of cannons and, and doing crashing cars through stunt shows and stuff like that to try and, and make, make, make ends meet. Mm-hmm. Um, but through it all, the one thing that he always came back to was his family, Mm. you know, whatever it was, he wanted to be an actor. He grew up on a farm, wanted to be an actor, but once he had his family, he knew he had to do every, everything he had to do to make sure the family was taken care of. So he comes across as incredibly genuine, um, but flawed like we all are, Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I had a whole new respect for the man after seeing the documentary and seeing some of the trials and tribulations that he went through and how he overcame that adversity. And I won't spoil it and tell you whether or not he gets the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You have to watch it to see that. <laughs> so, but that's my pick this week, starring Adam West uh, on Amazon Prime. And we'll be back with some closing remarks. So that was all we had this week. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a light show this week for entertainment news. Mm-hmm. But given the zombie apocalypse we're living through here. You kinda, At least there's something. Yeah. You have to expect it to be slow. Mm-hmm. I would invite folks to uh, check out our long form articles on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. Um, I would also invite folks to subscribe to our podcast. Uh, our audio podcast can be found as Insights into Entertainment. Our video podcast can be found as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Amazon. Now you can subscribe to us and listen on your favorite Echo device. I won't say your name because she'll wake up in the room here. <laughs> and she'll be like, what do you want? <laughs> Um, but we're pretty much anywhere the podcasts are these days. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you subscribe, you'll get notification as soon as they go, uh, live. We publish all of our podcasts on Monday mornings at 8 a.m. Uh, we do record them on the weekends live on Twitch and we stream on Twitch six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can reach out to us via email. At comments at insightsintothings.com. Or on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are available on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. The audio versions of all of our podcasts at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can catch high res videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. And I think that is it. And of course, since our daughter was so nice to plug us, we will now give her a plug. Uh, We are a podcast network. It is not just insights into entertainment. We also have insights into teens, which is a weekly podcast that you and our daughter Madison uh, host, co-host. And then there is Insights Into Tomorrow, which is the monthly podcast hosted by you and your son, Sam. Very good. Now everyone's been plugged. Now everybody's been plugged. Wonderful. (laughs) That is all for this week. Another one in the books. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.
Thank you.